Hey guys, so today we're talking about airports. So airports are awesome things that they do, Bob. If you are an engineer or anything in civil engineering, it is something you want to be involved with somewhere in your life. If you just think of it, how many airports there are in a country, it is a limited amount. And just the amount of engineering that goes into it, it is really something that is a special type of development that you could be part of. We will go into why it is so special and why it is so difficult. So we'll be talking about the phases of airport design, the elements of airport structure, and the drainage of the facility. So first up, we go to the definition. It's the terminal, which is the building that receives passengers, the apron, which is a hard surfaced areas where aircraft stand or park. Then you get a holding area, which is a temporary, a temporary parking for all of them. You get a taxiway, uh, you get an air side, which is basically all the air development things of an airport. Then you get the land side, all the land development things like the parking and that type of stuff in your buildings. Then you get your runway. Everyone knows what a runway is. That's where the planes take off and land. Other little things that you might experience or might read through these pages, I think it's chapter nine in your book, is peer fingers, peer satellites, remote satellites, remote aprons, and remote peers. You'll see now, now what that is. Airport master plans. So there's a couple of phases to airport development. The first phase is airport requirements. So first up, you need to see you need to do the pre-planning. So you need to know what the initial needs of the place is, what the, then you need to get a proposal in and from the consultants and you need to select your consultants and the application for study funding. So you need to get your funding for it. Then you need to get your environmental considerations right. You need to understand the environmental requirements needed. Then your aviation forecast, so the forecast of aeronautical demand, then your public involvement. So you need to actually involve the, pu the public and know what their uh, worries and their problems are and involve those stakeholders. Remember, say there is an airport being built right next to a suburb. What is the problems that the public might have there re revolved around noise and traffic and that type of things that will exist from an airport then you get existing conditions and facility requirements so the that assess the ability of the existing airport on both the air side and the land side support of the forecast then you get into phase two or uh, which is site selection the essential requirements in airport constructions are including these that are in the book. So read the book as well. It should be as level as possible. Obviously, you don't want to land on a mountain or on the side of a mountain. Let's rather say it like that. Then approaches to runways should be free of trees, hills, buildings, and other obstructions. So that's why you'd see in a lot of cities that the airport uh, kind of is on the outskirts of the city because the city usually gets built first or the development gets bigger and bigger until the need for an airport does exist and then they start building the airport on the outside of the city. Uh, then you get, uh, it should be as free as possible from smoke and weather that produces low visibility. Then you get to phase three, on airport land use plans. So. You guys, I don't think you guys have talked about land use plans so far a lot, but basically just thinking of it in a city context, some, some areas are designated areas for housing developments or for suburbs where people live. Other areas are designated places for industrial activity. Other areas are designated for recreational activities like parks and places for people to get together that type of thing it is a, it designates the land for certain uses 
because of where it is lying, where it does lie on your specific area. So that's where it gets into your airport as well. The purpose is to achieve an arrangement of land uses within the airport's boundaries, boundaries which best utilizes available properties for present and future airport needs. So the different land use plans or different sections that you would have in an airport, on airport would be your airfield operation area, your terminal area, your terminal support area, your airport development or slash support area, then your airport compatible development and then your aviation easement. So what are these things? It is the airport operation, airfield operation area is the most critical airport element. So that's basically your air side of things. There where the planes land and that, that thing. So then you get the terminal area. Remember there where your passengers are received. Then you get the terminal support area. So the facilities associated with the terminal building, like your uh, parking for your cars or a hotel. Then you get airport development and support area. This includes for your cargo and general aviation and variety of functions. Then you get airport compatible development used for development that do not directly support airport related functions. Okay, then you get aviation easement. This includes any portion of the airport's runway protected zone or the RPZ that are off airport property. So you have a, a RPZ, which is around your airport, which for basically the lifespan of that airport, nothing can be developed in that space or nothing tall can be developed in that space or nothing legally can be developed in that space. Then you get your phase four, which is financing. So you identify the financial plan for the airport. Now we're going to talk about the airport structure. So the runways and the taxiways, the airport aprons, the terminal buildings, the hangar and the service buildings, the air freight building, and then the parking. So this is a picture of OR Tambo International Airport. I don't know if you guys have been there. It is quite big. It looks like a city on its own. So what we're going to talk about is the runway. It's one of the most important things. The other parts is in your book. You can read through that, but I'm going to mostly focus on the runway. And one other thing that I'll go into now, a runway is a paved load bearing area that aircraft use to land and take off. Its size is dependent on a variety of factors. Several runway configurations exist. You get a single runway, a parallel runway, open V runways, and intersecting runways. Then you, predominant wind directions determine the direction of the runway. Read up a little bit on that, on why the wind direction does matter. I can just tell you that as, a, as someone that wants to take off with a plane, you want to go into the wind, but read up a little bit more on that. Factors in the capacity of a runway or runway system depends on aircraft types. So is it air buses landing over there? Is it just helicopters landing over there? Is it uh, small planes? What type of traffic are you expecting? The performance characteristics of the aircraft. So is it a very big one? Is it very fast? All that things are something you need to consider when you do build your pavement structure. Then you get into the landing and takeoff gross weight of the aircraft. Again, how fast does it go? How long does it take to take off? Uh, then your air traffic control techniques, your apron capacity, landing aids, landing system, your elevation of the airport. Read up on that. Why does that matter? And then your runway gradient. 
Okay, the other thing I'm going to talk about is your terminal buildings. And I'm just going to highlight it quickly for you. You get different ways that terminals are set out. And I th if you've been at airports, you've maybe noticed that they do look a little bit different. You get, firstly, you get this remote apron. So that is where your terminal is over here and your apron is separate, where all your planes just stand over there. Then you get peer satellites. So a satellite is this circle over here where all your planes go stand around and you get these peers connecting it. And you get remote satellites, so get your terminal and there is no peers connecting to the satellites. Then you get remote peers, so there's nothing actually, the terminal doesn't connect to the peers over here. And then you get peer fingers which are just spread out from the terminal. So actually quite easy if you do look at it. So then we talk about the pavement structure. It is to withstand the enormous loads applied to the ground. Necessary, and it is, it is necessary to provide suitable pavements for aprons and maintenance areas and for runways and taxiways. The design criteria include adequate strength, adequate fatigue strength, absence of loose particles. This is very important. Most roads, you will get a little bit of loose material on it. In a, on an airfield, there can't be any loose material whatsoever. It will damage planes and it could risk a lot of lives. Then the resistance to jet blast, the resistance to fuel spillage, you always get fuel spillage on all roads. Um, and diesel and petrol is very bad for asphalt roads, which we build our roads with actually, so it doesn't make too much sense. But so you need to get a road that does actually withstand that fuel. Then withstand temperature fluctuations, good surface drainage, skid resistance, good riding surface, and ease of maintenance. You need to quickly maintain the road because planes need to get in and out. If somewhere in the road there's a little bit of a crack in a, a airfield, a whole bunch of people can't go to that area for a couple of days. So it needs to be easily maintained. You can also read, on the, read up on the types of pavement structures. You get rigid, flexible, and composite for airfields which is on page 197 to 198. Getting into the design phase of actually getting your pavement structure, you don't need to know too much about this. You can maybe just know the steps because you do do this on a computer program. But that is about it. It is just a very important pavement structure when you do build it. Then you get into drainage. One of the most important things on an airfield, you can't get a lot of water lying on the, on the pavement there. Like you will see over there, you could see why that might be very dangerous to land in. Okay, it is very important to consider and cater for the water, uh, whether surface or subsurface, and to minimize damaging effects by water can read up more on the drainage. There is a couple of drainage systems you use. You get surface, you get subsurface, and that is also split up into different sections in your book. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope you understand the airfields a little bit better. I hope you do want to design or work on that one day. It is certainly one of my dreams.